Shabbat Shalom, everyone, on this Parshat Naso, in which I mentioned is Birkat Kohanim, the blessings that we share with each other every Shabbat morning, the threefold blessing. You'll notice the hand structure, the formation that the Kohanim's hand is making. This is what we're going to shoot for today. When we serve as a Mamlechet Kohanim, the nation of priests. And if you don't see it, there is a shin, a letter shin, that the Kohen is making. Shin, the first letter of the word Shaddai, yet another name for God. Vayedaber Adonai el Moshe le Mohor, Daber el Aharon viel vanav le Mohor, Kote varachu et bene Yisrael amor lahem. Yudhevave spoke to Moses, spoke to Moshe, saying, Talk to your brother <laughs> and his sons, his vanav. Talk to Aaron, speak to Aaron, and tell him that this is the way that you, meaning the Kohanim, shall bless the people Israel. Say to them, say to them what? You are very familiar with these words by now. Yudhevave bless you and protect you. Adonai deal kindly and graciously with you. Yudhevave bestow favor upon you and grant you peace. I'm using here a more traditional translation than the ones that we use. And in a moment, you'll see why. Perhaps it's a little bit easier to understand the, commenta the, uh, the commentaries about what each of these lines is pointing us towards. Now, <clears throat> let me back up for a second here and stay right there. Rabbi Shai held in his beautiful new book, Judaism is About Love, which is really why we've been singing and talking and meditating about love this morning. Rabbi Shai held shares that when the Kohanim bless, when the Kohanim bless the community with the priestly blessing, they do so responsively in the same way that we do it here, except for they do it word by word. If you are in shul, where this is practiced, especially on any of the festival mornings, but in more observant synagogues every morning in Israel, it'll be each word that's repeated, not the entire sentence. Oh, we do that too. Wait a second. I take all that back. But here's Shai held. When the Kohanim bless the community with the priestly blessing, they do so responsibly. The shots, that's short for the term Shalira Sibor, the representative of the community, recites each word of the blessing and the Kohanim repeat it. Now, on the face of this, this might seem kind of strange. Do the Kohanim need to be reminded word by word of a set of verses that they no doubt know by heart? No, they don't. So basically what we have here is something else going on. The prayer leader Reb Shai continues, is not in fact reminding them of their words, but rather mediating God's blessing from above, pouring it forth upon the Kohanim. The leader fills the Kohanim with blessings so that they are like vessels, full to overflowing with God's blessing. Another word for that is they are clay kodesh. They are holy vessels, the word kli, meaning a vessel. They are now so filled with blessing that they can channel it to others. So you're well aware that for years I have been harping upon the fact that it is not us who are offering the blessing, but it is through us that we are offering these blessings. But what's love got to do with it? What's love? Just before they channel blessings to the people, the Kohani recite a blessing. They recite a blessing acknowledging that they've been commanded to bless the people biahava, with love. This is from the Talmud, Sota, in which 
this very pas- this very pasuk is is um, uh, is discussed the 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 um, the priestly blessings, but that they must do it with love. In other words, that's what their kavanah has to be that they love the people that they're coming before. As Shulamit, you invited us to love our neighbor just a little bit more. I can only assume that many of the Kohanim have issues with other people in their community. They were human beings. But in this moment, serving as Kohanim, putting on that kippah, they were commanded to bless the people with love. Now, the Kohen extends his palms upwards towards the congregation, right, like this, Everybody do that and form like here. There we go. And form that shin and a triangle with your fingers open up. So there you see the shin that we're forming with each hand and a triangle that represents the Birkat Kohanim. And we'll go back to that in a moment. This is the very opposite of the traditional posture for prayer, which is what? Which is to have open hands when we're praying that, 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 that chain, that, that something we don't necessarily deserve bestowed upon us from above and to the sides from all over, right? So we hold our hands in this asana, in this position. With this palm, the Kohen forms a vessel into which God's pours a blessing. And then the palm extended upwards form a vessel for ourselves from which we may later drink. So we go from here as if we were at the brecha, at the, at, the, at, the, um, at the pool of blessing, and then we extend it to others. The palm extended outwards forms a vessel through which God channels God's blessing to others through us, through us. Now, what is hidden here? What is hidden? Ah, sorry about that. What is hidden? We have here a mathematical equation. We have three words in the first line. We have five words in the second line. We have how many? Seven words in the last line of Birkat Kohanim, of the priestly blessing. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen letters in the first line. We have twenty letters in the second line, and we have twenty-five letters in the third line, pointing to something that is perfect here and something that perhaps is missing. What is missing, of course, is the apex of the triangle. What is missing is what is apparently here, all along, hidden from view, which is yud heh vav heh, which is the one. So we have then one, three, five, seven. The one is missing. Now back to the corresponding understandings of these three lines. We go from the physical world to the world of peace. The first line, the rabbis instruct us, God bless you and protect you, about what? This is about physical property, that we should go rich. Really, that we should have more than we need so we can share it with others. The second line, Ya'er Adonai Panav Eilecha V'yechunecha, this is about spiritual endeavors, that you should be successful in all of your spiritual practices. And the purpose of all of this, the purpose of all of this, of course, is to lead to shalom as all of our prayers do. That God should turn God's face to us and grant us shalom, grant us peace. That is the end all of all of our prayers, of the Kaddish, of the Kaddishim, of all of the different Kaddishes in our services. The Rambam notes about this instruction to the Kohanim that they need to bless the people with love Blessing the people showed that you sought their good and seeking their good, that's what loving them means. We seek the good of others. So today, when we raise our hands and we refine our hand positions to create the shin, we do so with love, an outpouring of love. God takes care of us. We don't worry about ourselves. Our concern is with each other. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs of Blessed Memory, T. 
teaches, why then does the blessing from the mitzvah, no other blessing specify that it must be done with love? There's no other blessing where we are required to do it with love. Uniquely in this case of the priestly blessing, the priest is merely a machshir mitzvah. The priest, you and I, we are an enabler. We are not a doer. We are not the source of that love. We are enabling the love. The doer is God's self. And then these three lines in our parsha today end with this line. Let them place my name on the children of Israel and I will blessing. Again, the Kohanima merely channels through which God's blessing flows. So my last question here is why is the blessing in the singular? If the instruction for the Levites to bless the people, why? are not the Levites blessing the people in the plural? Here's a hint. Each of us is a clay. Each of us is a holy vessel. And together, we all add up to... Oh, check this out. We add up to all of Israel. Kohen, Levi, and Yisrael. Oof. You see the letters? Kaf for, for Kohen, Lamed for Levi, Yud for Yisrael, all adding up to a holy vessel, all adding up and culminating in shalom and peace. For peace is the strongest vessel for blessing. Being a vessel and a channel for blessing is the challenge of Parshat Naso. May we all, by ourselves and together, work to form a more perfect union. For the only way to get it together is together with love. I hope some of you know the song if we only have love, then tomorrow will dawn, and the days of our years will rise on that morn. If we only have love, if to brace without fears, we will kiss with our eyes, we will sleep without tears. If we only have love with our arms open wide, then the young and the old will stand at our side. If we only have love, love that's falling like rain, then the parched desert earth will grow green again. We only have love for the hymn that we shout, for the song that we sing, then we'll have a way out. If we only have love, we can reach those in pain, we can heal all our wounds, we can use our own names. If we only have love, we can melt all the guns and then give a new world to our daughters and sons. If we only have love, then Jerusalem stands and then death has no shadow. There are no foreign lands. If we only have love, We'll never bow down, we'll be tall as the pines, neither heroes nor clouds. If we only have love, we'll be women and men, and we'll drink from the grail to be born once again. Then with nothing at all, but the little we are, we'll have conquered all time.
stream, all the sun, all space, and the stars. Good Shabbos, everyone.